Please. I'm here in Medjugorjean. I'm with, what's your name? Susan. And your name? Glenn. And where are you from? We're from Canada. Canada? Yes. Which part of Canada? Uh, the western part, Alberta. Alberta. Yes. And first time for you here in Medjugorjean? Uh, second time for me and uh, third for Susan. Mm -hmm. Why do you come back? We felt that we were called back. We came on a pilgrimage uh, last fall mm -hmm. and uh, all of us uh, my son Benedict, whom you've interviewed before, mm -hmm. and Susan and I all felt this uh, this call, this invitation back to Medjugorje, mm -hmm. and uh, work allowed me to uh, take a, an extended time to spend with us, mm -hmm. with uh, Mary here. So mm -hmm. we're here for two months. Wow, this mm -hmm. is beautiful. Yes. And how is so far the experience being here? Oh, amazing! Mm -hmm. It's um, there are so many experiences, but. The one that I can uh, speak most of is how uh, the joy of the people, mm -hmm. the joy that uh, we receive by um, entering into the spirit of Medjugorje, the program, following Our Lady's messages, mm -hmm. and uh, entering into what is she, she's calling us to, mm -hmm. to pray, to uh, fast, to read scripture and spend time in adoration, to go to confession. So it's a, it's a tremendous joy and great spiritual renewal for, for all of us and, and any pilgrim that uh, comes here, anybody, whether they're, they come as a pilgrim or a tourist or whatever, should, uh, we would encourage to enter into that, um, enter into what is here and available to them mm -hmm. uh, just so that, we can, so that we can, you know, really embrace Mary's message. She, you know, she has been sent with a mission Mm -hmm. from her son and none of us need to be afraid of getting closer to Mary or to um, you know allowing her uh, more and more into our life into our lives mm -hmm. because it is through through Mary that we get to know Jesus Jesus has the fingerprints of Mary and Saint Joseph all over him mm -hmm. they she taught she taught him all of the necessary human things mm -hmm. and so when we come to know Jesus, we come to know Mary, and vice versa. When we come to know Mary, we come to know Jesus. It's just such a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. you and anything? for you, Medjugorje, being here now for quite a while, how do you feel? How do I feel? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, you feel like you're in heaven. Yeah. It's the closest place Can to heaven. Can you describe it for people who don't know, you know, they're watching this video and don't know Medjugorje. What would you tell them? Why is it heaven here? A lot of people say that. It must, must be just a special grace that God gives because of our Lady coming, mm -hmm. right? It must just be a special grace. I came um, in 1989, the first time. Mm -hmm. I heard about it when I was uh, a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I just knew, it was so exciting to imagine her um, being here and the children being able to see her. So I was really excited and I wanted to come and say thank you because the, her messages made me realize that God was very real mm -hmm. and God was very close. Mm -hmm. The things she would tell the children, she, you knew she had been watching them all during the day and knew what they were thinking and feeling um, and communicating. So I just wanted to come and say thank you. So I was at university at the time and my father and mother brought me. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew I could say thank you from home. Of course, God is everywhere and Our Lady hears our prayers everywhere. But I just wanted to come here to say thank you in person because it made such a difference in my life. Mm -hmm. And so it's never changed after all these years, just over 30 some years. Um, it's never changed. I've never doubted that there was God. I've never doubted. Um, that are that the importance of prayer mm -hmm. and so we started our Glenn says he owes the visionaries because the visionaries got decided to get married and so it gave me the courage to get married <laughs> So he's like I owe the visionaries a, mm -hmm. <laughs> a thank you <laughs> and um, So we you know, we we put our Lady's messages into practice. We never owned a television. We prayed the rosary We um, it had a big you know impact on our life and so the five stones the that's right prayer, yeah. the adoration the daily mass Confession, confession, yeah, and, and scripture, yeah, and fasting. And scripture, That's right. And that yeah. is all something that you you grow into. Like our, mm -hmm. you know, the the uh, the parish didn't start, you know, with all of that just kind of full bore. Like Mary gently brought them into uh, that, uh, living that. And mm -hmm. so, you know, even in our life, we, you know, as we grow, I think as a couple and in our marriage, that that those things have grown as well. That we've become. Uh, more engaged in that way as well. We had wanted to come for our honeymoon back yeah. in uh, 92, but yeah. the war was on and we thought that it wasn't uh, maybe the best thing to, to come. <laughs> Adventure honeymoon. <Yeah. laughs> mm -hmm. 
and it uh, it took us 30 years to to get here so that was last year um, so and now we're back again this uh, this summer so I interrupted you so I can remember one more thing I would want to share is that I remember the moment um, as a teenager uh -huh. thinking mm, fasting is a little bit difficult and even at that point one rosary a day felt difficult uh -huh. and I remember the thought thinking well I could just decide that this isn't true uh -huh. and then I would be free I remember that moment thinking that but I knew it wasn't intellectually honest because even the non-believers who were coming as scientists uh -huh. could not disprove anything and how could they how could the visionaries kneel in a split second it wasn't possible for them to practice that mm -hmm. so i knew into you know i knew that i wouldn't be intellectually honest if i just said oh it's not true because it's too hard mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i remember that moment and mm -hmm. maybe we all need to go through that moment when we hear about it oh is it true is it not and i sometimes hear people who've even come here and they'll say well if mary is appearing how, there's no other um answer mm -hmm. that is um, intellectually satisfying right children can't do this for this long it's just not humanly possible so i would encourage people to be intellectually honest god's given us a mind to really um to think it's not just it's not just a fairy tale on feelings you know um that's a beautiful part of our faith right is, is the reason mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i just remember that moment and i'm grateful and it's not too hard to fast and it's not too hard to pray because if you don't pray you don't have joy our lady says pray until it becomes a joy for you it's true all the messages buy the you can buy a, a book of messages or uh, our lady mm -hmm. and um it's so beautiful to intersperse them with your family rosary mm -hmm. when you pray just in between each decade take one just one line and think about it and ponder it and try to live it that day and that's so beautiful you really want to get your hands on the messages don't just come here and think it's a nice vacation you know you have to take home the messages and live them and ponder them mm -hmm. so that's what i want to and share is there something one of the messages which is very important for you, which pops up to right now? Uh, that one, well, two little parts that she re repeats often is mm -hmm. that pray until prayer becomes a joy for you. Mm -hmm. That is very, very true. Mm -hmm. And also that she is with us. She's not just with us when she comes for a few minutes every day to the visionaries. Mm -hmm. She's really with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that's when she repeats that part of the message. That's so special to me because we finally, we, that really clicked in for us when we were here last mm -hmm. in November, mm -hmm. um, that she's really here with us all the time. We noticed that when we were, it was time to leave mm -hmm. and we were both saying goodbye to Our Lady at, at a statue that we had just felt really close to her at. Mm -hmm. And as we stepped out of the church, I started to sob. Mm -hmm. I knew it was just a statue, but my spirit sensed I was saying goodbye to my mother. Mm -hmm. So that's when we just realized she's here all the time. And so it's a very special place to come. You, of course, you can pray at home and of course you need the messages at home. But when you come here, you feel how close heaven is to earth and different things I would have in mind about wondering, what does the scripture mean? You know, then here you just ponder it and you'll get light you didn't get before. Like the Magnificat, some of the words in the Magnificat, I just didn't quite understand. Mm -hmm. But the parish did a novena as uh -huh. coming up to the anniversary. Yeah. And so pondering it every day and we would read it up on the on the apparition hill and all of a sudden a certain homily that the priest gave just opened my eyes and realized that's what that line means mm -hmm. so that happens so often here just yes you're just the spirit is closer i could go on forever tom this is beautiful. <laughs> <I better stop. laughs> no that is beautiful and you know um, a lot of people look for their vocation here you know they mm. want to get married to find the right partner what would you give them as an advice hmm. Go ahead. No, mine was going to be silly to go up to Our Lady statue and say, I need a husband. <laughs> <laughs> marry, heard, marry me. Yeah, I, I, I heard a cute story where someone did that and right behind them a person said, oh, well, would coffee do for now? They, en they ended up getting married. So. Really? <laughs> did you not hear that story? No, oh. well, what is that story about? Tell us. Oh boy, so it's going to be pretty general because we don't remember the priest and we don't remember the, the year it happened, but someone told us that, um, I think it was maybe during the war, they were they needed food and a person was working at an yes, orphanage. Yes, oh, this yes. is just, you should get someone who has more details, but it came down the stairs and said, I'm just, I'm not going to pray anymore because God doesn't hear. Mm -hmm. And the priest said, well, what's wrong? And she said, I, we need, is it pasta? Pasta, I think. Oh, gluten-free gluten pasta. Gluten-free pasta. We need gluten-free pasta. And it's just not coming. I'm just not going to pray anymore. And the priest said, oh, well, did you pray out loud? She says, no. He says, well, you must pray out loud. So she went back up to the chapel and she said, we need gluten-free gluten pasta. pasta. And she said it several times loudly. And so, um, she, and then she walked out, came down the stairs, and someone delivered gluten-free pasta to the door. So, a, I think it was a pilgrim. Somebody heard this story from the priest and said, wow, that's amazing, and mm -hmm. I really want a husband. So mm -hmm. she went up to Apparition Hill, mm -hmm. and out loud, 
prayed that. I need a husband. Yeah. And then that's what happened. A, ma- a gentleman a, little, a few stones back said, would coffee do for now? And they ended up getting married. So when our pilgrimage group comes, that's a little tradition. Is there anybody in the group that needs to needs a husband or wife? Then the, the tour guide goes up to the, the hill and does that for them. But at night, because he's too shy to do it during the day, <laughs> to yell it out loud. <laughs> so that's not, I don't recommend that to your people. It's just a cute little story, but of yeah. course, like on a more serious side. But in a sense, in a sense that, that speaks to, you know, we, kind of a cute story, but it, um, prayer, that I think is the, when we come here, mm-hmm. like Susan had mentioned, I've described to many people when we come here, back home, Let's say the veil is 10 layers of sheer fabric thick between heaven and earth. Mm-hmm. But here, it's only one layer thick. And so is th- that's my experience. It's just it's so much closer. So when we pray, mm-hmm. we can hear and, and discern better what it is that God is calling to us to. Mm-hmm. Whether we're already married, mm-hmm. whether, we're, we're, whether we're trying to discern whether it's, it's the priesthood or religious life or a married life, mm-hmm. that, that we can... T- you know, what can people do? They can pray and open their hearts and ask Mary, ask our Lord, what is it that, what is it that you want for us? Yes. You talked about, the most yeah. Yeah. you asked Susan what the, you know, what message sort of rings true. It, I don't know if it's a particular message, but it's a, it's a part of a message in the mm-hmm. sense that Mary says, I need your prayers. That struck me, it's just like, wow, the Queen of Heaven needs us to participate in this what an honor. and and it just it just it it boggled my mind that wow like like who am I or what am I in like how is that even how is that even useful but you know and it's not just the queen of heaven asking us this it's her son through her that is asking us uh, of this and so what is the proper response whether it's again you know discerning a vocation is just it's just like here i am here i am i i offer you this this littleness this this you know it, it's such a it's such a minor such a small gift it's worth nothing and yet she's asking for it i i just find that so yes. profound so profound she needs us yes. yeah. yeah isn't that amazing mm-hmm. you, should, you should ask glenn if he had an interesting experience last time we were here yeah, tell. So what is the experience? Your <laughs> which, experience? Which one? Praise which one? one? <laughs> the one you feel like God wanted you to share oh, with people. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. So last time we were here, mm-hmm. the uh, we were here with a pilgrimage group, mm-hmm. and we had a, a day off, and we were going to get a, a picture as a group uh, mm-hmm. just after the English Mass. And so we uh, we all met there, mm-hmm. and then they said, oh, change of plans. Uh, there's an apparition that we, uh, we've been invited to at the castle. Mm-hmm. So... All of us sort of think, oh, and, and we hear that we hear that uh, not only not only at, when you're at an apparition, but even if you're here at the parish, that af- after the apparition time, Mary will bless the objects. But we thought, oh, this will be special. We'll be will be sort of there. Mm-hmm. So all of us sort of went away and you know got our rosaries and whatever else that we wanted maybe to bring to this apparition. We were so, so excited. We were so excited. So um, we had wanted to bring home a statue. Went to the went to the Franciscan store, picked out a statue. Susan ran back to her pension, and I waited uh, at the um, the Adoration Chapel. And I was just so excited about being able to go to this apparition. I mean, I didn't know what to expect, but I was excited by the prospect. Mm-hmm. And I walked into the Adoration Chapel, and then it hit me: Jesus, you're the miracle. You're here, and I felt, I felt sheepish, guilty a little bit of, of being so excited about going to the apparition. And and I saw sort of in my mind's eye or interiorly or something as I was looking at, at Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, this he he's in my in my in my mind or eye he sort of came off to the side and beautiful face, beautiful eyes, bright smile, totally excited and uh, and he said, Oh Glenn he says, you're excited about getting to visit my mom? He says, let me tell you how excited I am that you get to meet my mom. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. it was just like, oh, wow. That's, so it, it took away all of that sort of guilt, all of that sort of sheepishness. And so I, I prayed and I said, well, Lord, is this just a sort of a message for me? And he said, no, I want you to go and tell your group. Mm-hmm. 
So I had the opportunity to tell my group. And then as we were walking to apparition, uh, was to the apparition that evening, again, I heard in my mind him saying, oh, but Glenn, this isn't just for you. And it's not just for your pilgrimage group. This is a message for everybody that, that Jesus wants us to listen to his mother. He wants us to hear the message she has. It's not, it's not Mary's message. It's Jesus' message. And he is asking his mother to send that message, to witness, to be his witness here on earth of his message. He loves us so much. He wants, he wants to draw us to himself. And what, what better way than through a mother to, to, to draw his, he gave us as her, as our mother, and what better way to draw us in as her children. There's a song that they sing, lay your tender hands upon us. It's just like, it's our, it's our lady who's just like drawing us in. Come, come my child, come. And so, you know, we don't need to, whether we're Catholic or Protestant or, or nothing, we don't need to be afraid of Mary. Because Mary brings the message of Jesus to us. We, and as a mother, as a tender mother, that can, that can lead us, that can draw us closer to her son, closer to the message. You talk about how do you discern your vocation or how do you live your vocation more. Go to the mother. She'll bring you to the son and the son will show you. Jesus will show us and it's through Mary. So it's just, a, it's just, so this is a, this is, I feel like I've been sort of commissioned to say, don't be afraid of Our Lady. She is His chosen witness for this time to bring His message to the world. And she's so motherly, like they say, right? Yeah. She's so motherly, and that's what you're talking about. That, so as you pray the rosary, you get to feel that same motherly love. If in your mind you just realize she, which because another part of her message is she intercedes for us before God, mm -hmm. for each one of us. So we can read that sentence and think, oh, that sounds nice. But when you think about it, it's as if there was only Tom in the world and she's praying just for you. She's on her knees interceding. When we realize that, it changes everything, that she's interceding for us as if we're the only person on earth. And when we pray to her, she's listening to us as if we're the only person on earth. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when do you pray the rosary as a family? As Absolutely. We do have, have been for years. That was our... Will you uh, touch me? And how, how is it... Changing your relationship, how how was your marriage? Well, it started it started off that way. We had because I knew about Medjugorje before mm -hmm. we ever got married, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in university he was willing to come Friday nights to a Medjugorje prayer group and pray the rosary. Mm -hmm. so, That's the mom, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So prayer was and prayer was a part of his family already. We already loved Our Lady, so um, we just started that way. The cute thing is though is that since our children grew up falling asleep to the rosary, you know, if we prayed it at bedtime, the little ones would fall asleep. I that do. right now I have to confess, <laughs> they, <laughs> and it's very relaxing for them so sometimes they feel oh I still get sleepy when I pray the rosary because it was just so part of it or often if we've already prayed you know our three rosaries or four rosaries during the day uh -huh. it comes you know to bedtime again and you know Benedict will say well could we just do one more like I just I like to end the he day just, it's just so part of his life he just wants to end it with the I rosary see, so. I made an interview with him he's sparkling he lifted me up I was a bit tired your son oh he's full of the spirit <laughs> and it's because of you too you're full of no, the it's spirit. because of our lady because so good Lord, to yes, us lady, yeah yes. because and because yep. of our parents you know mm -hmm. We owe so much. It's it's all a gift. It's all mm -hmm. a gift. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is this is a little bit of a rabbit trail, but um, doing doing things as a family, like we had the great joy, mm -hmm. the great privilege um, to teach our children at home. So back in Canada, where we live, in Alberta, we can homeschool our children, and that was a great that was a great privilege for us. I know that that people throughout the world that 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 doesn't exist for everybody, mm -hmm. and so. Um, whether that opportunity exists or not, what it did for us is it provided us time together as a family. And so, again, whether that opportunity exists or not, uh, I would encourage families, not only just in family prayer time, but to, to spend time as a family, to move away. I remember when we were first married, um, we just thought, well, we're not going to have a television. And maybe what we'll do is when we, when we get to the point where we can pray and do all the things that are necessary, then we'll have time to watch a TV or whatever. So then we'll get one. Well, then it, <laughs> it's just a joke. it never happened. I knew it would <laughs> never happen. It would never happen. Uh -huh. And so, so, you know, that provided opportunities for us to, 
spend time together as a family, not only in prayer, but in, you know, playing games or reading books aloud, great books, and discussing things and mm-hmm. just just having time together. So. And you mentioned also about people getting married. Yeah. I know our, our daughter recently got married, mm-hmm. and um, when she when her now husband asked if he could court our daughter, um, Glenn gave them the advice: you should pray the rosary together every day. And they did that. They were both at college, a very academic college, very busy. And they made that commitment and did that. And when you see them together, they are so happy. They're so joyful. They, they're married and they're expecting a baby and they still sit like this, touching each other because they're like just so happy, to be, <laughs> <laughs> so happy to be together. You know, okay. you don't often see that. You don't often yeah, see no. the joy and the excitement of being together as a couple. Mm-hmm. And I know that that's a big part of it. They prayed together. They made that commitment. And that's because that's what they're going to need to get through marriage mm-hmm. how do you keep a marriage together if you don't pray mm-hmm. yeah. right so mm-hmm. anyway. and the fact of the rosary prayer for you what is for you the rosary prayer mm-hmm. do you want me to answer while yeah, you're, you're, oh, you're okay. thinking you that, yeah. yes it is to enter into the life of jesus and mary brings uh, brings scripture alive brings scripture alive because repeatedly you enter in to that moment And so it brings heaven and earth are just come closer. And you notice, you notice the days that sometimes if you don't get a chance to pray one first thing in the morning, you notice the difference, you know, as the day's going on. It's, we don't like to leave all three or four to the evening. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. You you want to do it during the day. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're here, when you come to Medjugorje, you have to climb Apparition Hill and pray your rosary beside each of those things because Heaven is so close. Like, I felt like Saint Simeon just, just stepped out and blessed me. I felt like he was really standing there. I've never, I never get that at home. I never, Simeon is just, you know, some Old Testament person, right? Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden it was just like they were real. Hi, Deidre. <laughs> there is Deidre. to say hello. So beautiful to see you. <laughs> so to pray and to, to, in your mind, put yourself right there, right there with them and mm-hmm. listen and let that scripture change you and think of it from, sometimes you think about what was it like for the angel Gabriel mm-hmm. to be sent by hev- heaven to, you know, t- mm-hmm. for that moment. What was it like for the shepherd? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden mm-hmm. I could relate to the shepherd on the hill. The, sh- the shepherd's realizing something amazing is here, mm-hmm. but who's going to believe us? We're just little shepherds. And that's how I, f- I felt. That's like coming here. Mm-hmm. Something amazing is happening here. And you feel like a little shepherd out in the world. People are just overlooking mm-hmm. the most important thing that's happening in the world right now. So the rosary is a chance to step into the scripture. Sorry, I'm going on too yes. long. No, it's and I think, and I think, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a way of centering my day around something. Like uh, my my work brings me away from home often, and and I have to travel, and so I I pray as I travel, pray the rosary, and it, and, it, and it sort of centers my day. Uh, it's a it's some it's a way in which we can. Um, you know, begin, uh, participate in our day and end our day with. It's something that that helps us to keep grounded in this world that that um, can draw you away in so many ways. It, it allows us to stay yeah. grounded in. And the rosary makes the devil flee. So yes. you get those moments of just perfect clarity because there's nothing wants to be around to bother you because yes. they don't they don't want scripture they don't like our lady right our lady's so powerful so the enemy stays farther away so you get clarity of thought yes absolutely yeah. beautiful and what That's would you tell see. people you know confession is the center here in Medjugorje mm-hmm. besides the Eucharist if somebody is scared maybe wants to go to confession 20 years didn't go and thinks what will the priest mm. think of me what would you tell them about the beauty of confession what, how should they proceed his mercy oh were you about to say something go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. God's mercy is beyond our understanding absolutely beyond our understanding and that the love that the visionaries feel from Our Lady mm-hmm. is a reflection of God's love for us mm-hmm. of just wanting to embrace you mm-hmm. I had this beautiful little image in my mind maybe I'll share this because this would relate to confession mm-hmm. um, that beautiful song Glenn was saying of Our Lady lay your gentle hands upon us mm-hmm. and in my mind I saw a little boy that had had a hurt hand and was turning away from Our Lady she was her statue was here and like not wanting to show you know when sometimes children get hurt they're like oh, oh don't don't like just leave me alone for a moment and my I just started to weep because I imagined the mother wanting to console this child so it's the same with our our Lord who loves us so much and how he weeps he must just weep waiting for us to bring our injury to him so that he can heal it so it's a great tragedy when people grow up thinking that God is is only a judge 
and that like God. Or like this old crampy man with a white beard who wants to put us to hell. That is such he a crime. Yes. He it's must not just know. Not true at all. Not true. And so th how loving that he would send his mother, right, to mm -hmm. warm people's hearts so they would not be afraid of God so that she could draw them. So the sacrament of confession is, again, you can't even put the, the words to what happens. It's the beginning of people's conversion, right, when they come here. Come here. Go, the first thing they're told, go to confession. Prepare, our, our lady prepare knows. Prepare and go to confession. Prepare and go to confession. And people say they come out and they just feel like they're flying, just the, the weight off their shoulders. They had no idea they were carrying it and the healing that can come from it. Don't wait. And the thing that prevents you talk about fear or anxiety or whatever, that, that <clears throat> is, is the clue that we need to because, because we're trying <laughs> The devil is trying to keep us away from that. He's keeping, trying to keep us in bondage, keep us away from the freedom that confession brings. And so the, the fear, we just have to, we have to say, you know, like, like get behind me, Satan. This is, this is where I'm headed. I am going here because I desire freedom and I know. It's like the woman, you know, touching the very tassel of Jesus, just the very hem of his garment. I am going there regardless. I am not going to be afraid. I'm going to because freedom exists in the sacrament. And speaking of, of freedom, God gives us our freedom, right? So mm. He doesn't. He, we then, in our freedom, have to respond and say, mm. "I want to free. come back to you." Yes. Yes. Say that again. True love gives choice. For exactly. So it's in our freedom. Then it's something for us to do is to take that step into the confessional. Mm -hmm. We have to do mm. our part, and it's such a small thing, isn't it? It's such a small thing when you think about it, even though it's very difficult. You know, to prepare and to imagine being prepare? there. What would you tell people in Sean? How could they prepare a little bit for confession? Going through the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. slowly. Mm -hmm. um, if people have the practice of every evening mm -hmm. um, thinking about their day, then it's easier. They've spent time thinking. But you, God has given us a conscience, so we can feel. Uh, we can feel when something wasn't quite right, even if you're not even sure why. It's like, why did that situation? I didn't feel quite right. If you take that to prayer. And if you're honest, then all of a sudden a scripture will come and you realize, oh, that's why. I could have been much more loving. I could have been much more merciful. I mean, you know, we're supposed to, be, we're called to be very merciful. It's supposed to be perfect, like our Father's perfect, good to even the bad. Sometimes I feel maybe I'm just in not being good to bad people, you know. And you read the scripture and it's like, oh, no, no, that's why it didn't feel right. So scripture and following your conscience. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit is particularly when we're here in Medjugorje, but everywhere, he's, yeah. he's, he's everywhere. So those things, those things are tools, but then we can say, well, come Holy Spirit, open my eyes too, as I work, you know, meditate on these, the Ten Commandments. Where have I offended God in these areas? The Holy Spirit is present, and, and again, it's our freedom. We, it's all there. All we need to do is ask. Ask and you shall receive very simple, it's not complicated. The yes, right? mm -hmm. yes. And maybe it's where we're most wounded is where we should start, where the mm -hmm. most pain is. I know when I came here in November, I knelt in front of the statue in St. James Church. I didn't realize it was a miraculous statue. Many things happened there. And I could just cry. I could just cry because it was so hard to prepare for confession. It was sometimes when situations are so painful, you're not even sure what was my fault and what was somebody else's fault. All you know is you're just so pain, so much pain and so much anger. Yeah. And when I realized I have this pain and anger to God, because that was one of Our Lady's messages, open your heart so that, to God, right? So that's what I was in November, opening my heart to God. I didn't realize there was this gravel in there and there was broken glass in there and there was so much that needed because I was angry at God. Not angry at Our Lady because nothing's yeah, so her lot fault. Of people are angry at God yeah. for what happened to us, no? right? Right. Mm -hmm. God could have done something. Our Lady, you know, I don't blame her for anything. So yeah. the fact that I could go and cry to her mm -hmm. was a beautiful healing of just weeping and weeping. And so, and and it takes time then sometimes to know what, um, why is there so much pain and what was my part in it? What do I confess from that? Mm -hmm. So it's okay to 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 cry and it's good to start at those points that are most painful. You could start with the little things, you know, going to confession, you know, maybe I told a white lie, maybe I, you know, cheated, cheated on my taxes or, you know, whatever, that type of thing. But it, it's good to go to the heart. What's, what's the most painful part of your life that you've closed off because you're so angry at God mm -hmm. for not intervening, for not doing better? And, um, and let, you know, let God work there. Stay there. Cry in Our Lady's arms. Work it through. Even at adoration, in my mind, mm -hmm. I was even like, 
taking a baseball bat and hitting the monstrance. That's how upset I was at, with God, you know. I needed to get out the anger. Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you help more, you know? And so you work through that and then when you come, it's God okay to come. And honesty. The, you know? Yeah, mm, it was all mm, there, mm, you know. Mm, so mm. because of our latest message, I could open that up, mm. open it up to God and then the healing can start to come. And so then, anyway, it's a long story, no, but yeah, go, to the, going. go to the painful part and then, you'll, you know, God will prepare you for it. What to say in confession? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And I see you have a personal relationship with Christ. This is the center of our faith. We have the help of the Holy Spirit. How can people experience that living relationship with the living God? And what would you tell them? How can they have this relationship with this living God? Just Good. ask. You know how if people have been dabbling in the occult, mm -hmm. if they've made any little opening, the enemy is just there. Mm -hmm. Well, how much more for God, if you say, God, I just, I open myself up to you. How much more he will be there. He mm -hmm. is waiting for our yes. So it's just a matter of saying, of just accepting who he is, the gift, who you are, and you are just on your way because God is just right there. As soon as you speak, his ear is at your lips. You know, he's just from the heart. He's just waiting. That's what our lady says. From the heart, do everything from, from the, the heart. heart. See, Not like we Germans, from the mind. You know? <laughs> I know there's so much from our latest messages we could never say it all at once, but from the heart. I'm from glad you brought that up. Of yeah. course. Yes. Not from our, just our lips, not from our mind. Yeah. From the heart. Uh, Did you want to say something about that? I just, just that, just that begin. Mm -hmm. It's just take that first step. Like you're saying, like, say, I am going to begin. And it doesn't need to be, you know, I'm going to do all of these great things. Just begin. Small just, things in love. Just say yes. Mm -hmm. Just say, say. Yeah. Our Lady says that she'll take us by the hand. Yeah. So just to sit there and say, I, to, uh, to hold Our Lady's hand, hold God's hand in the other, mm -hmm. and just realize that they are there and they will guide you. Watch, watch the things that will happen in your life. The most amazing things will happen that day, the next day. Open the Bible. Just let it fall open and watch what the Lord is going to say to you. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. exciting. It's the most yeah. exciting. It's an adventure, and, no? And you'll is, realize yes. you were never alone. You'll realize God was right there <coughs> beside you, your guardian angel, Our Lady. They were there all along. You just didn't see it. It'll open a whole new world to you. Yes. And that's a message that we often said to our children. You're never alone. Even if mom and dad are gone, even if you're never alone. And that's a message not only for our family, but for everyone who may have the opportunity to watch this video is we are never, ever ever alone never alone mm -hmm. it's just a lie of satan it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a lie of satan just yeah. open the heart mm -hmm. and say god i want to experience you he said it's scriptural yes come yes. to me and i will show you yes we're talking too long no one's no. gonna watch uh, it's too long <laughs> seek. and you got seek and you will find me yes. you know it's all yeah. scriptural it's that's for yes. our protestant friends you yes. have a favorite script, script, scripture verse like you have? so many the road to emmaus is my absolute favorite yeah. story uh-huh and so I pray to recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread, like those people did. They recognized him when he broke the bread. Mm -hmm. So here in our day, we have the Eucharist. It can look like just a piece of bread. Mm -hmm. So I pray the same, help me to recognize you in the breaking of the bread. But also because their hearts were on so fire. warm. On fire. And I can just relate to that, you know? Yeah, even as a child, I can relate to something being so holy that you just feel, you know, a certain homily or a certain story, you yes. just feel that burning so that's my favorite scripture and for you the road to Emmaus. and and mine is maybe it speaks to maybe just to me or maybe to men but come to me all of you who are burdened and heavily laden and i will give you rest i will give you rest it's a, we live in a world that we have to do 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 or we feel we have to do 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 go 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 and uh, come to me and i will give you rest you made the experience because I was praying to the Surrender Novena. Mm, mm, Don Dolindo, yes. you can find yes, Surrender Novena. Yes. You think, give me all the burdens. I take care of it. Yes. I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Yes. Sister Faustina. Yes, yes, That's Saint Faustina. Yes. Give it all to him. Don't think it through. Don't get a heart attack, whatever. It, we are not meant to function like this. Give yes. it to God and he will work it through. You yes. made this experience? Yes, yes. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. Uh, Saint Faustina, I've... I've uh, well, that's your saint. I was, yeah, that's yeah. my saint, yes. yes. This, this this message of divine mercy, Jesus, I trust. Many times in our life we had the picture of the, the sacred heart of Jesus and I would look at it and and all I would hear him say to me was, trust me. It's just like, trust me. <laughs> there were moments in my life where it was just like, I can't even look at that picture. Because <laughs> I'm not Jeez, ready to all trust. All you're going to say is, trust me. And I know that, that was, you know, but I, but, but 
what a beautiful message. Like, trust me, surrender, trust. You know, beautiful. I, it's your favorite saint, Sister oh, Faustina. Oh. <laughs> And yes. for you, favorite saint? Pio. Pater Pio. Pater Pio. 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 Why? When my daughter was very young, she was sick. Yeah. And uh, the regular doctors just couldn't help, you know. So in the middle of the night, I would just be holding her and she'd be crying. And I, I started to wonder if I should just, like, just give up. Just, just, like, it was just so frustrating. I felt like God wasn't hearing my prayer and no doctors could help. And um, I picked up a book and read about Padre Pio. And even though he had that so many gifts and so many gifts of healing, he built a hospital to help children. And also he takes spiritual children even now. Yeah. So I needed him as a spiritual father because I, I was in such need. So I have that confidence of that he is um, taking care of me, watching over me, praying for me, um, someone I can go to in desperate situations. But then I, it gave me the courage to keep seeking, you know, doctors to eventually found the, you know, the healing for my daughter. But, but if people haven't read anything about Padre Pio, you have to read something about Padre Pio, an amazing uh, man who um, will bring you closer to God and, and has such a love that even now, even though he's in heaven, he's, he's still watching out over us and will help us, help us learn how to suffer for 50 years, to suffer so greatly. Mm -hmm. Um, that's something that I want to learn more how not to not to hate suffering yeah. but to realize its redemptive value so and it brings us Padre closer Pio. to God because we cry out to God no? mm -hmm. and can be mm -hmm. useful to him yeah. yeah and at the end what is your favorite spot in Medjugorje you have a favorite place yes uh, it's the it's the evening program uh, during adoration um, oh yeah Uh, you can go to private adoration here and there, there are people there but when you're in particular here in the, in the summer even in the fall the um, the immense crowd of people on their knees adoring Jesus surrendering their lives to him um, silent you know in prayer and then the The little musical interludes and the, and the and the reflections that the priests give, drawing you in more fully into the the embrace of Jesus in this uh, in this um, in this time of adoration. That would be uh, one of one of I mean only one. There's there's so many, <laughs> but yes. I'm gonna sneak only in one. three, even though you just said one. <laughs> <laughs> the statue of the risen Christ, uh -huh. especially yeah. if it's raining, uh -huh. it's as if the teardrops are falling off off his nose and it, it's just such a tender special place to offer him um, your company for all those who he longs for you know mm. to in reparation it's a beautiful beautiful place um, apparition hill yeah. praying the rosary there so uh, at the crowning of thorns that's the most uh, special place go there and and offer him mm -hmm. your own crown offer him your own sufferings offer that to him at the crowning of thorns and up the mountain at the station where Jesus is, di is, uh, is on the cross kiss the ground and cl close your eyes and pray to him there and you will be amazed at what you'll hear. Those wow. are my three favorites. And <laughs> But the there's many more. People, wow, beautiful. Why, what would you tell at the end people, why should they come to Major Royal? Because Our Lady asks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, does she ask us to come here? I don't know if she asks us. She blesses us for coming here. <coughs> um, why would they she come? She invites. She invites. You know, um, what would you tell them? I come to Medjugorje. People go all, you know, when I came in university, mm -hmm. you know, 30 years ago, people said, you're going to Europe and you're only going to Yugoslavia? Like, you're not going <laughs> to now. Paris? You're not going, yeah. I had no desire to go anywhere else. Why would anyone want to go anywhere else? Or you think of all the places, you know, the football games people go to. Or other, that's all passing. That's all, it's all nothing. So why would they come here? Because it's, because everything is here. Like our son said in his video, this is real life. <laughs> the, this is where real life happens. The world is passing. It's not. It's not. Um, it, it's the. It's the journey in which we're in. Mm -hmm. But here we get to experience what real life is like in Medjugorje. And we can get in touch with what God, God wants us to do with our life. Mm -hmm. We become free, you know. We set mm -hmm. free, yes. and, and we find our true individuality in God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we all want. We want to be free, individual, yes. loved. 
And yes. we're trying to heavily embrace joy. you as well. Yeah. Yes. Joy. Feel the joy. That's right. Thank you, Tom, Jesus. for what you do. Thank Many you. people watch your videos. They've come up to our son saying, Hi, I'm from the Netherlands. I saw you on Tom Medjugorje. And yes. <laughs> Many times people have come up to him. So thank you for what you yes, do. Thank, I say, you. thank you for your time. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bless thank you. you. So you wanted to say something about the rosary. And you asked why I pray the rosary, and I meant to say, um, but I was waiting for him to finish, was mm -hmm. one rosary can work miracles in your life and in the world. Mm -hmm. That's what Our Lady said. So that's, an, that's a big reason of why to pray the rosary. Wow. Thanks for Thank letting you. me add that. You are very, very welcome. <clears throat>